What's up guys, Rupdad here, welcoming you to week one of the Breed Jacks Battle Royale. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be in this league. I... I kind of feel like I've actually made it after so many years of just playing draft format and... Slowly but surely trying to work my way up to this point. Because this league's got some heavy hitters and... I kind of feel like David in a valley full of Goliaths here. But, I cannot let my nerves get the best of me, so we are going to go ahead and roll on. Um, for those of you who are new to uh, my, my channel, first of all, welcome. Second of all, if you're curious about what you're seeing on the screen, how I do my team builders is I typically split divide up into two sections. A, a locker room segment where you get to just see the team I'm bringing into battle, kind of just chilling in Pokemon camp. Well, it adds a little more personality to uh, these videos. And as we are going to be doing right now, we are switching over to the quote-unquote chalkboard, which is, of course, Pokemon Showdown, to discuss the matchup at hand. Appearing off to the right, you should see the roster for my Week 1 opponent, who is the Sin City Scissors, coached by Patty Trills. His team consists of the following. Clefable, Slowbro, Darmanitan, Heliolisk, Heracross, Braviary, Cofagragus, Alolan Persian, Steelix, and Rosalia. Quite a bit of bulk on his roster, but he does have a few heavy hitters and a couple of speedy things as well. But, my team is not quite deterred about this, because my front office certainly has uh, helped me in formulating a game plan for this. Huge shoutouts especially to Gage as always, he... He is just a beast when it comes to coming up with ideas for teams. I owe him a lot for joining my front office and being the help he has been. So let's go ahead and see exactly how I crack this uh, defensive wall and breach Sin City, shall we? Starting off, you're probably raising an eyebrow because, yes, I am bringing my Raboot Week 1, Prodigy. This, uh, this young lad's actually got quite a bit going for it in this game, because, while, to my knowledge, Libero Cinderace is banned, because of course that thing is, that thing is a, an abomination, on the same vein, actually kind of worse, than uh, Protein Greninja, Libero Raboot, I don't believe, is banned. If I am wrong on this, you'll see something pop up on the screen right now, and it'll definitely be corrected by the time we actually battle. I'm running Heavy Duty Boots just so uh, Prodigy is not the victim of uh, hazards when I need it to. U-Turn, Gunk Shot, High Jump Kick, and Flare Blitz pretty much actually punch huge holes in a good chunk of this team. The 188 Speed EVs, I believe, are there specifically to make sure I am outrunning Heracross at all times. Because since Raboot is base 94 and Darmanitan's base 95, if I wanted to try to outpace Darm, I would either need him to not be Scarf, first off, which I'm pretty sure Scarf Darm's gonna come because Scarf Darm is almost always what comes. Or two, I would need him running an Adamant Darm for whatever reason. Which, how many people actually run Adamant Darm considering it's already got sheer force, basically giving it double power in, the, in most cases anyway? Jolly's just there to make sure it outruns things. Still, Prodigy's got a lot going for it. The Gunk Shot's definitely going to destroy Clefable. Flare Blitz is powerful stab. U-Turn allows me to get out of dodge in a hurry. High Jump Kick demolishes things like Heliolisk and Alolan Persian. And especially Steelix. I think Steelix is the big sticking point for uh, why I'm bringing High Jump Kick in particular. Because while Flare Blitz does a lot to it... High Jump Kick definitely annihilates it, especially since Liberal would make me a Fighting type, which therefore makes High Jump Kick Stab, which therefore means Steelix is probably going to be caved in on itself. Now, you want some literal heat for Week 1? Gage concocted a very heat set that I am very excited to use. We're going to set fire to Week 1 right out of the gate, because why not? I have my whole Lucha here, Ray Phoenix, um, based off of the Luchador, who currently wrestles for AEW, is one half of the Lucha Bros, alongside Pentagon Jr. Yes, I am a big wrestling fan. So, we have Swords Dance, Acrobatics, Close Combat, and Fling. Now, why Fling, you're probably asking. Well, two words. 
Slowbro, Cofagrigus. In most cases, those two things are just, are basically natural walls to Holucha. And of course, they are what I'm ex one of them or both of them, I'm honestly expecting to be Patty's immediate go-to the moment he sees Holucha hit the field. So, Fling is designed to basically get around that. With the 236 attack EVs, I've got just enough that after a sword stance, I have a chance of one-shotting them. With some prior chip from, say, rocks, Fling is definitely going to kill them. Now, of course, for Fling to reach its maximum potential, we need a move that's capable of doing, or we need an item that's capable of getting it to such a point. And what better item than TR-43, which is the TR that teaches Overheat? Yes, you can Fling TRs, and Fling actually takes on the base power of the move that the TR would actually be teaching. So, yeah, this is going to be a very powerful fling. I'm... Ray Phoenix is throwing literal fire here. Um, 188 speed is enough that after the after Unburden is triggered, definitely allows Holucha to outpace everything without worry. It misses out on kind of outrunning Alolan Persian and I think to some degree Heliolix too before Unburden triggers because I'm not because I am running Adamant. But I'm not as concerned about that because I'm severely doubting he brings Heliolus in straight on Holucha. He would let something go first. And ideally, if I already if I already burn Fling and have my Unburden activated, then Heliolus is straight up history. Same with Alolan Persian. The Alolan Persian I don't think can really touch Holucha that well anyway, because fighting type. Moving on down the list. I call upon the power of Dragonzord. I know Tyrantor is not a dragon, but it looks like Dragonzord from Power Rangers, and I want at least one Power Rangers reference on this team, so let me have this. Sandstream to set sand, because sand is always good at chipping things down, and because I have grassy terrain at my disposal, thanks to Rillaboom, who we will get to in a moment. Uh, my team is actually not as bothered by the sand. I have Choppleberry to be able to take fighting hits from things like uh, Superpower Darm or Heracross or even Close Combat Braviary, just things that would normally throw a fighting attack my way, hoping to kill Tyranitar, only to find themselves uh, facing down a nasty surprise. This is basically an offensive Dragon Dance T-Tar. Stone Edge, Crunch, and Fire Punch pretty much cover the vast majority of his team. I'm... I am running Jolly to make sure that at, at plus one, T-Tar is able to outrun a lot more than it otherwise would. The 196 speed, I believe, allows T-Tar to guarantee outrun... What is it? I, I think it's guarantee outrun at least Heliolisk for sure after it gets to plus one, if nothing else. T-Tar's kind of in this weird position where it's actually outsped by most of his team, or it outspeeds most of his team, no or it outspeeds uh, some things no matter what. It's, it's, it's an odd speed position to be in for T-Tar this game, sitting at base 61. But I think that speed will suffice. Stone Edge is of course Stab, Crunch is there primarily for the slow bro, Fire Punch deals with the likes of Heracross, since, it's, since Stone Edge is neutral on it, and it wrecks Rosalia as well, also gives me a way to hit Steelix. Bas basic idea because he ac he actually kind of struggles a bit to deal with uh, D dance with an off with an offensive D dance T tar. Now I said we were gonna get back to Rillaboom, and now is the time. Anyone who has seen any of my League of Extraordinary Trainers videos might recognize this nickname. It is Neil Pert. I like to thank Tom Fox for the nickname because that's what he nicknames his starter and his Pokemon uh, Sword playthrough. And it definitely fits, considering... Rest in peace, Neil Pert. You are, a you are a true working class warrior. With a mean, mean stride. Today's Tom Sawyer. Anyone who does not know Neil Pert, go listen to some Rush, please. They, they are one of the best bands of all time. Anyway. Rillaboom is what I'm pulling my grassy sea shenanigans on, not Holucha, because Holucha's got some other heat to get around its typical walls here. Grassy Surge is of course going to set grassy terrain, which is going to be useful for my benefit. Sword Sands boosts my attack. The grassy seed will uh, add, some, add some defense to me. 
Acrobatics and low kick pretty much serve as all the coverage I think I need in most scenarios. Grassy Glide is of course Stab, and there is the lovely little caveat that Grassy Glide always goes first when used on Grassy Terrain. So ideally the plan is to get Rillaboom in at an opportune time, preferably when Darm's kind of weakened a bit, because that's honestly probably the big thing that's going to cause Neil Pert some problems here with this idea. Have the Grassy Sea trigger, set up, get an SD set up, and then basically start going to town on things. Grassy Glide will allow me to outrun anything that would normally outrun me. Acrobatics definitely destroys Heracross, however I have, do have to be wary that we are running a speed, I do risk a speed tie here. That's why I'm running Jolly as opposed to Adamant, just because SD still gives me all the power I will need, and I would think he'd probably be more liable to run Adamant Heracross than Jolly for the extra power, especially if he's running a gut set. Maybe I'll be wrong, but we will see how that plays out. Next up, we had Ca we have Cadwaladder. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I am not, I sincerely apologize. Um, anyone who does, who does not know, this is the uh, the uh, famous Welsh king who uh, is often associated with the red dragon that is on the Welsh flag. Anyway, I have a Rosalie Berry to be able to take on the likes of Clefable, so I can eat a Moonblast and just destroy, destroy it with a Gunk Shot. I've got rocks on Drodagon, Crunch and Superpower to cover everything else. I also have Rough Skin because, well, Darmanitan. I am not letting that thing basically run around on me scot-free. If I can either force him into a situation where he has to lock himself into a ground move, which, if he has to lock himself into Earthquake, which uh, allows me to bring in Halucha then to scare it out, or... Basically, Drudagon is my main switch into Darmanitan, and the Rosalie Berry allows us to take on Clefable. I've got enough bulk, bulk to be able to take both of them on, especially the Rosa with the Rosalie Berry factored in for Drudagon when it deals with, comes to Clefable. I believe the 100 speed is just enough for Drudagon to allow me to guarantee outrun a min a no speed investment Clefable, because. I'm seeing him probably going more of a defensive route to try to help eat hits from my team, because I've got a fairly offensive team here. And last but not least, we have my Tentacruel, the Ruin. Anyone who is not familiar with this should probably look into some Starbound. I'll admit it's a game I've been trying to get into, I actually haven't had a chance to play it yet, I do have it. I've just been trying to find an opportunity to actually set aside some time to play it, because I've got a lot going on, especially now that I'm back at work. Anyway, lots of physical bulks, enough, a decent amount of special bulk, but of course, Tentacle also has good natural special bulk. Rapid Spin, Toxic Spice, Sludge Bomb, and Scald. Scald and Sludge Bomb pretty much are all the stab coverage I need. Rapid Spin allows me to get rid of my own hazards, and I think I can actually stack hazards on him here, because looking at his roster, Braviary is his one and only form of hazard removal, and that is something I can easily exploit. Of course, Rosalia could easily absorb uh, Tentacruel's Toxic Spikes, but I'm actually not thinking Rosalia comes to this game just because of the presence of Hall Lucha. but we'll see how that plays out. If he does bring it, fair play, but honestly, outside of that, Braviary is his only hazard removal, and I think I can hazard stack him to a point where I'm definitely uh, wearing down his roster a lot quicker. So, that is going to be the team as we switch over back over to our uh, locker room here. See my team kind of enjoying themselves, getting acquainted with one another post-draft, getting ready for the battle ahead. I hope you guys enjoyed this segment, and now I'm going to switch over to the battle. I will see you guys when it's battle time. All right, it is battle time. This took a bit longer to set up than expected. We ran into a few issues and had to get a bit of an extension, but it's all good because we're ready to go. And let's see if my Sulu are ready to start our BBR journey off on the right foot, preferably. I've got my powerhouse team all set to go. Patty's gonna be bringing probably his 
most of his fattest stuff. So we will see uh, if the best defense is a good offense after all, I suppose. I guess that's probably what the idea we're going with this week. Though, he does have a Darmanitan, so... Maybe he... I don't know. We'll see how he wants to play this. Alright, so he brings... Steelix? Clefable. There's Darm, no surprise there. Heracross. Braviary. And... Cofagrigus. Okay. So, nice thing, nice thing I noticed right out of the gate is the fact that he only brought one between Cofagrigus and uh, Slowbro. I was actually a little concerned he would bring both, because that would actually be quite a bit of a pain for me to deal with. But, this allows us to be able to proceed unscathed. I honestly think Cabaladder is my uh, best bet here, my best lead here, because I can get my rocks up, even if I'm staring down a Clefable. If you lead Scarf Darm trying to pivot out on me or get a big hit off, I can just abuse Rough Skin right out of the gate. So, getting my rocks up early would definitely help hinder this team. Braviary is actually not that much of a surprise now that I think about it, considering... I mean, he... It's his only Defogger, so I would not be surprised if he kind of heavily relies on that thing throughout the course of this game. Especially since I do have uh, hazard stacking plans in place, kind of. Anyway, good luck, have fun, Patty. As he is going to leave with the Darm, I'm to some degree not surprised by that. So, I can definitely take anything he wants to throw at me, and he's definitely taking rough skin damage. If uh... I'm just going to go ahead and set my rocks up, because that's what I want to do right out of the gate. I can. We'll see how he wants to play this. He's just going to U-turn. Which is fine, because I did not take that as well as I thought I would. Or maybe, hang on a sec. I'm at, what, 130? 76. Actually, no, that's that's kind of about right for U-turn, actually, now that I think about it. If he's Scarfed Arm. Because if he's Banded Arm, yeah, he'd be doing a lot more than that. So he's got to be Scarfed. As he goes into Clefable, which is fine, because I can set my rocks up. Alright, so from here... Not gonna lie, I kind of want to stay in a gunk shot. Because I can take a Moonblast from this thing with my Rosalie Berry. Then again, I also could switch and... I'm just gonna stay in a gunk shot. He's, he's gonna Thunder Wave. Okay. So he does outspeed me, so he's not a min speed Clefable. That is good to know. But I am gonna be able to fire off this gunk shot, which is really nice. And do over half. And there's its leftovers. Hmm. I kind of want to stay in and gunk shot again. Ga let's gamble a bit. The fact that it, I stayed in might throw him off. He might be thinking I may actually have the Rosalie Berry now. If if I st willingly stayed in and fired off a gunk shot. He knows I can't be AV because I set rocks up. Um, Cavalier being paralyzed is... Eh... It, it could be worse. He could have toxic me. I can, I can deal with that, because Cavalier is not the fastest thing in the world anyway. And he, he had, most of what he has kind of outspeed... Well, outside of maybe Steelix and Cofagrigus, though the T-Wave probably fixes that at this point, um, everything he has pretty much outpaces me anyway. This thing was mostly here to set rocks up. Beat... He, okay, there's the Moonblast. He's going to pop my Rosalie Berry, which is fine with me. I should be able to eat this up fairly well. Yep, thanks to that. And I am going to be able to get the gunk shot off, and I do hit it as well. So, not quite. Hmm. Almost. 
Almost. I'm going to switch to the Ruin now. I would really ra much rather... Uh... I'm just going to play it safe and preserve Cabal Ladder because I could still abuse its rough skin later for dealing with Darm. As he's going to protect to try to get some leftovers back, which is fair enough. He, he probably he could have killed me with a Moonblast now that my Rosalie Berry's burned. But that is fine. He probably has Wish in his last move slot, actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Sludge Bomb. I would not be surprised if he switches to Steelix. Or he could just protect the Scout. He could do that as well. The Thunder Wave, Moonblast, Protect. I'm I'm guessing Wish has got to be Clefable's last move. So, Moonblast is the only offensive move this thing has. So, it really... Yeah, he's just going to switch into Steelix, I'm presuming. Into Heracross! Okay, that is interesting. Because I'm going to get some decent... I do get the Poison, so... I don't know if this thing is Flame Orb or not, but regardless, either way, he's got his, uh, whatever ability he is, it's triggered now. Hmm. In that case, I'm going to Sludge Bomb again. If he doesn't straight up attack me, if he's more of a standard Flame Orb SD kind of set... If he just attacks me, I can take the I can still take the hit. And then Sludge Bomb will take this thing down enough where the poison's gonna start becoming a concern, at the very least. Or at least make my next move a little easier to figure out. That is quite the interesting stare down there. Heracross just sitting there smiling despite it being poisoned. Uh, he's got Earthquake. And the Ruin is able to survive! Yeah, you are not killing the Ruin that easily. There's a reason why it's the end boss to uh, Starbound. And this thing is not going to die to the poison. Interesting. So I do have a bit of a slight problem here. This thing will die to the poison, but... Mmm... I'm going to click Toxic Spikes just to see if I can try to get them set up. But I think I'm willing to let the Ruin go here and kind of trade it. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna trade uh, Tentacruel for Heracross, which is all right by me. Because his Clefable is just about dead. His Dorm has been chipped down a bit. So in this double down scenario... What do I feel comfortable doing here? I kind of don't have a problem going back into Cabal Ladder. Because he may go into he may just go back into Darm. Figuring he could just use that to scout and pivot out again. If he goes into Clefable, I can uh, figure that one out accordingly. I've at least got my rock. I couldn't get T-Spikes up, but I've at least got rocks up. He's going to send out Braviary. So he definitely wants to defog uh, these rocks away for sure. Um, I am... I'm going to fire off a superpower. That way, if he does attack me, he's taking chip damage. He's just going to straight up Brave Bird, which is fair enough. That's fine. I do lose Cabal Ladder, but he's going to take rough skin damage as well as the Brave Bird recoil. So that chips that thing down a little bit. And I saw no rock damage, so he's definitely got boots on this thing. So, in that respect, I'm 
I kind of want to... Well, maybe not. I think... Yeah, I'm going to go Prodigy instead, actually. Prodigy is definitely the play here. And I think what my plan of attack is... I'm going to U-turn, actually. I was considering it, but I'm pretty sure a Braviary... A Braver from Braviary... Oh! He's going to switch! Into go Fagragus. Alright, fair enough then. That thing is going to take Rock's damage. I'm going to U-turn out, so... Me losing Libero to... Me losing Libero to Mummy is actually not that bad. And I could definitely scare the thing a bit with, with uh... Yeah, I'm gonna summon Dragonzord now. So I'm gonna set Sand up, which is gonna chip away at this uh, Kofagragus a little more. And no leftovers. So there's a chance he might be Colberberry, actually, now that I'm thinking about it in that scenario. Um, I'm going to set up a D-Dance regardless and see what happens. I know I'm risking the Will-O-Wisp, as he, he does stay in, so I'm almost positive he's definitely got Colberberry. He's going to Will-O-Wisp? Yep, and he does hit it. Okay, that was, a, that was bad on my part. I knew I was taking that gamble. And yet, I did it anyway. But, that is fine. I'm gonna D-Dance a second time. Uh, yeah, it at least... It, it, it at least... Yeah, uh, I can't talk anymore. It at least make Dragonzord hit a little harder out of this, uh... And he's got Body Press now, which is going to trigger my Choppleberry. Which, that's still like quite a lot. I'm alright with that, just because of the fact that... I mean... This thing is not as effective against Darm at this point anyway. I'm going to Crunch... Just because, if this, if I'm right about this thing about Colberberry, I want that Colberberry burn. Yup, he is Colberberry. So, I will take that just because... It at least gets rid of the Colberberry. Which I will certainly take at this point. And he's definitely gonna kill me with Body Press. So, I lose T-Tar. I know I'm down 5-3, but I'm... Considering this Cofagragus is worn down, as is, uh, Clefable, I'm not in as bad of a spot as you might think. In the grand scheme of things. So I think what I'm going to do right now... Do I try this now? I know if I stay in, I invite a Will-O-Wisp. Mmm... Yeah, I'm gonna go Ray Phoenix now. We're just gonna play this card right out of the gate. I'm just gonna go straight for the fling. It'll trigger Unburden, which definitely works. I'll get my thumbnail image at least. So I'm gonna throw him TR-43. Throwing some literal fire, and that is the end of Cofagragus. And there goes the Sandstorm, so uh, Holich is not getting the worn down. So good news, my Unburden is triggered now, even though I wish I had the SD to go with it. And Cofagragus is off the table. And he's going to go into Braviary now. Which... 
Unfortunately, I do not kill with an acrobatics or even a close combat, and he definitely slaughters me with, uh... Well, you know what? I'm gonna go for the close combat anyway, because it should do more damage. Just because at least that way... I'm putting Bravier in a position where it's definitely killing itself with Brave Bird. Which, he is gonna go for the Brave Bird. And down goes Ray Phoenix. But down should be going Braviary as well. Yep. Alright, so downside is he still has Dorm. Uh. Hmm. I would actually not be surprised to see Dorm come in right about now. Um, I'm gonna go into Neil Pert. I know I'll be triggering my triggering my grassy seed a little early. But if nothing else. Nope. He's going Steelix. Which is fine. So that triggers my grassy seed. Because I have my grassy surge up. Definitely stops this thing from being able to Earthquake me. I'm gonna go ahead and Swords Dance now. Because I, I think we can still pull this back. If I get Neil Pert set up, set up enough. S Steel Roller. Credit where credit's due. That was a smart call. And nothing I can really do about that. I'm gonna go ahead and low kick, though. Almost kills this thing. He's gonna Iron Head. You know, Pert is still, still alive. Kind of. Yeah, I'm gonna low kick again. At least get the Steelix out of here. I will give him credit. Steel Roller was a, was a smart call on his part. I don't know why I didn't see that coming. But Steelix is gone at least. That's the good news. The bad news, though, is that I'm pretty sure Darm wins from this point. So I don't have my terrain anymore. I do have plus one defense. Um, I am at 66 HP. He would definitely kill me with a Flare Blitz. I'm in range where a U-turn could potentially kill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to Prodigy. I'm gonna try something here. Good god, that Flare Blitz still did way too much. Ugh. That is not what I was hoping for at all. I'm gonna switch back to Neil Pert now, but I'm- yeah, I think this Darm's got it for him. Uh, not how I would have wanted to start the season, but it is what it is. See if there's any humanly possible way I can somehow put myself in a scenario where... No, he, he's not going to kill himself to Flare Blitz Recoil, not to, do not to Rillaboom. It's a nice thought, but it's not happening. In hindsight, I probably should have preserved Drudagon a little longer, but then again, anything else I would have sent in that scenario would have died to a Braviary Brave Bird anyway. Sacking Tentacruel to Heracross is probably not a small. He's withdrawing. Interesting. I, I am actually quite curious about that. 
Part of me wants to think it's because he... Well, no. Even if I'm Scarfed, as long as... His Darmanitan outpaces a uh, Raboot. Raboot's got no... Unless he's think he might be thinking I've got priority, which, to be fair, I did have priority in a potential set I was considering in either Sucker Punch or Quick Attack. And in retrospect, I probably should have kept it at this point. But this actually does work out for me. I'm going to Grassy Glide. This actually kind of works out for me now that I think about it. That he did make that switch. It, it was an unintentional mind game, but I think it think it worked because since I have my terrain back, Grassy Glide has priority now. He's gonna be taking rock damage when Darm comes back in. I don't know if Grassy Glide Grassy Glide may actually kill now because of that. Thanks to the priority with my terrain back up. So And that's gonna do it! That unintentional mind game actually saved this for me! Wow! <laughs> okay, uh... Ruffy, master of mind games, I guess? Is what we're, we'll go with, maybe? <laughs> Regardless, GG Patty, that was a great game, and... I'll be upfront, I probably, in, in, by, all re by all due respect, should have lost that game. But... The, the, the unintentional mind games worked, apparently. And, to be fair, I probably could have brought a Raboot with priority. I, it, it was on a set I was considering that my front office and I was, were playing around with. But, that is going to do it for us. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I have been Ruppy. And I will see you guys next time. Take care.